The setup for Rage 2 is that an asteroid has annihilated 80% of the world's population and humanity's numbers are dwindling. You play Walker, the last ranger of the wasteland, and have to battle gangs to find the tools and tech needed to crush the oppressive rule of the authority. The gameplay we have so far is super, super short, but there's still quite a lot of things to see. I'm James and I'm joined by Sam. Hello. And here are 23 things you might have missed in the trailer. <laughs> This is obviously the asteroid hitting the Earth right at the beginning of the game. And as we can see here, it's an open world, which is stated in the trailer a little later on. There are going to be big cities connected by roads with checkpoints and little outposts scattered everywhere. And we're told that ruthless and bloodthirsty gangs roam the open worlds and a tyrannical authority seek to rule with an iron fist. You have been robbed of your home and left for dead. And the press release say it's an open world full of emergent madness. So expect it to be quite the dynamic environment. Now here, Sam, we can see some tattoos on some of the what we're assuming are NPCs. So does this mean that there could be customizable characters, especially, obviously, if our hunch that we'll get onto later about the online world element is right. I hope so. This is one of the three factions that we've identified so far. This guy's part of the River Hogs, and they seem to live near um, the river, or at least areas with a good water source like a forest. All of the shots of them are in areas like that, and this guy has mice or rats hanging from the massive tusks, as do most of the gang members, so that's nice. Next up, we have the Abaddon fraction, uh, which we get from this screenshot titled Abaddon Attack. These guys have bright yellow eyes and scavenge their armor from anything they can find. Most of it is made from vehicle parts like tires and doors. And there's another faction later on called the Goons, which we're going to see later. And here's an enemy that we think belongs to the Authority, which is the bad guys. They're more technologically advanced, which would make sense in this post-apocalyptic world where everyone's struggling to survive, and unsurprisingly, nobody seems to like them. This must be a boss or a mini-boss-like character. He's called a Crusher, and from the looks of the armour, belongs to the Abaddon faction. But we can see him later in the trailer without armour, and he's in the jungle, so he's either lost, ventured into enemy territory, or hasn't been claimed by a faction yet. Ah, uh, now you see, these guys are drunk. Drinking in games is totally a thing now, and you can bet that if 80% of the world had been wiped out, you'd probably want to drink as well. Here we can see something that we think is going to be a mini-game at the MBTV station or area fairgroundy type thing, and it seems to be that you can shoot people who themselves are getting shot out of cannons, which is always fun. I'm totally in for that. <laughs> Here all the armour's made out of vehicle parts again, so you'd think this might belong to the Abaddon, but skip to the end of the trailer and you can see that it's in a camp with the River Hogs, so this looks to be their answer to the Crusher. And here's more of the big open world. The press release says that you can seamlessly traverse a vast and varied landscape from lush jungles to treacherous swamps and sun-scorched deserts in pursuit of the authority. The wasteland is massive and you've got the arsenal to fight for every inch. This car we see here isn't shooting, but there is a lot of carnage going on. We'd guess that instead of shooting, you've challenged the factions to a race where the winner gets to keep the car or whatever resources are on offer. Apparently you'll have access to monster trucks and an assortment of rugged and wasteland ready vehicles to speed across the badlands. Now during this sequence, you can see a Destiny Warlock style force slap, which is probably one of the nanotrite powers that we'll get onto later. Then there's some dual wielding with the boomerang weapon from the first game, which was called a wing stick and a shotgun, which is quite tasty. And here's the final faction. These guys are called goons and they're identifiable by the colorful graffiti on the walls, their clothes and the vehicles. I totally want in on this gang. Now this bit is interesting. As you can see, there are loads of people here shooting one guy, which we'd say belongs to the authority. So we'd wager that there's likely to be destiny style open world events in the game that multiple players can take part in while roaming the open world. Uh, that doesn't look like any kind of swear word that we know, but let us know what you think in the comments below. It's totally not a word. Like, let us know what you think and end in an S and have that many letters in it. I was going to say badass, but that is it's too many for even that, isn't it? And why would you start that out? Yeah, you just start, yeah, stupid. As well as the Destiny or Quake-style aerial play you can see here, there's more evidence of the nanotrite powers. This one seems to give you a boost jump, but look even closer, and you can see that the character actually double jumps as well, meaning that maneuverability upgrades or some minor class building is going to factor in and that's just a great kill let's watch that again 
And here's another example of those nanotrite powers. This one seems to highlight potential threats and explosive barrels, which is always handy. But wind it back and you can see two shots come from behind, which I'd suggest are from your teammate. So this could confirm co-op missions will be included. And the section ends with another power that looks a lot like a Titan ground punch from Destiny. You can almost make out the lead character's face here. He's called Walker and he's the last ranger of the Wasteland. It's fairly unusual for Bethesda lead characters to have a face, so it'll be interesting to see if this changes over time and he becomes another faceless hero. And here's that all-important grenade indicator, which is pretty standard, but it is a blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment. This looks very much like a rage mode, which could be another nanotrite power, and all those pickups on the ground could either be ammo or nanotrite refills. After all, it would make sense that the powers are limited, given how powerful they seem to be. Interesting, there's also an overdrive ability in the press release that gives you the ability to push your guns beyond their mechanical limits. And finally, here's the River Hogs boss-type mech thing again, which you seem to be able to get in for some Titanfall style chaos. So there's 23 things you might have missed in the Rage 2 trailer. We'll probably see more at Bethesda's E3 showcase with a new gameplay reveal and probably more. It's coming out in 2019 on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. So that's Rage 2. Click the boxes on the left for more content from us and don't forget to hit that big button in the middle to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews and features right here on Games Radar Plus.